Dr. Aaron Pierce adjusted his glasses, squinting at the digital interface before him. His office, bathed in the cold, sterile light of the overhead fluorescence, felt like an island of order amid a sea of secrets. Beyond the reinforced glass walls, the facility hummed with a life of its own, a living, breathing organism fueled by a cocktail of science, secrecy, and government funding. Pierce scrolled through the latest batch of reports on his tablet, his eyes lingering on the code name that had occupied his every waking thought for the past week SCP-029. Also known as the Daughter of Shadows, he'd read about anomalies before, even studied a few. But none had come with the same weight of classification and urgency. The dossier was as thick as it was alarming, each line of text a puzzle piece that hinted at a greater, more terrifying whole. He tapped on the intercom, his voice breaking the silence. Dr. Pierce to containment unit Theta-7, he said, his tone brisk, efficient. Prepare SCP-029 for examination. The response was immediate. Acknowledged, Dr. Pierce. Beginning protocol now. Protocol. It was a word that offered a comforting illusion of control. In this place, control was everything. Pierce stood, smoothing the creases of his lab coat, and made his way to the door, his footsteps echoing in the quiet corridor. The facility was a labyrinth, designed to confuse and disorient any unauthorized personnel. Pierce, however, had long since memorized every turn, every code required to access the inner sanctums. He reached containment unit Theta-7, a steel door marked with cautionary symbols and reinforced with layers of security. A retinal scan, fingerprint identification, and voice recognition later, the door slid open with a hiss, revealing the containment chamber beyond. The room was bathed in harsh white light, designed to banish every shadow. In the center, behind a transparent barrier, sat SCP-029. She was young, perhaps in her late teens, with long black hair that fell over her shoulders like a waterfall of ink. Her skin was pale, almost luminescent, contrasting starkly with the dark robe she wore. Her eyes, however, were what drew Pierce's gaze. They were dark, abyssal, and held a depth that seemed to swallow the light around them. He stepped closer to the barrier, studying her with a detached curiosity. SCP-029, he began, his voice calm, clinical. Can you hear me? The girl lifted her head, her eyes focusing on him with a slow, deliberate motion. For a moment she said nothing, her gaze piercing through the glass as if it offered no protection at all. Then she smiled, a slow, eerie smile that sent a chill down Pierce's spine. I hear you, doctor, she replied, her voice soft but clear, carrying a cadence that was both haunting and melodic. I hear everything. Pierce made a note on his tablet, his fingers steady despite the unease that pricked at the back of his mind. Can you tell me about the shadows, he asked, keeping his tone neutral, non-confrontational. Your file mentions a unique relationship with them. The girl tilted her head, her smile widening. The shadows are my friends, she said. They tell me secrets, show me things that others cannot see. They are always with me, even when the light tries to chase them away. Pierce's eyes flicked to the corners of the room, where the light seemed brightest, yet shadows still clung like dark stains. It was an anomaly, an inexplicable deviation from the expected that set his scientific mind alight with questions. He took a deep breath, reminding himself of the protocols, the safeguards in place. What kind of things do they show you, he pressed, feeling the weight of the unknown pressing against the walls of his understanding. SCP-029 leaned forward, her eyes gleaming with something that might have been amusement or malice. They show me the truth, doctor, she whispered. They show me what hides in the dark, what lurks in the corners of your mind. They show me you. Pierce felt a flicker of something cold and disquieting in his chest, a sensation he couldn't quite name. He straightened, clearing his throat, and made another note. Thank you, SCP-029, he said, stepping back. That will be all for today.
As he turned to leave, he heard her voice again, soft and lilting. Be careful, doctor. The shadows are always watching. Pierce paused, his hand hovering over the door's control panel. He glanced back at SCP-029, her smile still fixed in place, her eyes following his every move. For a moment he felt as though the room had grown colder, the light dimmer, as if the shadows themselves were closing in. He shook his head, banishing the thought. There was nothing to fear. He was a scientist, a man of logic and reason. Shadows were just that, shadows cast by light, explained by physics. But as he stepped into the corridor, the door ceiling shut behind him. Pierce couldn't shake the feeling that he was being watched, that unseen eyes tracked his every step. And somewhere in the depths of the facility, the shadows shifted, whispering secrets only they could hear. The lights in the observation chamber flickered momentarily as Dr. Aaron Pierce stepped inside, the door sealing behind him with a solid metallic thud. The air was cold, sterile, carrying the faint scent of antiseptic and recycled ventilation. Pierce's breath puffed out in a small cloud, quickly dissipating into the atmosphere as he adjusted his glasses and approached the transparent barrier separating him from the anomaly. SCP-029 sat on the other side, cross-legged on the floor, her dark eyes closed as if in meditation. Her long black hair spilled over her shoulders, blending into the shadows that pooled around her like living things. She seemed at peace, a stark contrast to the reports Pierce had read, the tales of violence, of blood, of shadows moving with a will of their own. It was a quiet, unnerving stillness, one that made Pierce's skin prickle. He cleared his throat, the sound loud in the silence. SCP-029, he began, keeping his tone steady. It's time for your examination. Her eyes snapped open, and for a brief, unsettling moment, they reflected the overhead lights in a way that made them seem inhuman, like a predator's eyes catching the moonlight. A slow, deliberate smile spread across her lips as she looked up at him, her gaze disconcertingly intense. Dr. Pierce, she said softly, her voice carrying an almost musical lilt. You've come to see me again. Pierce felt a shiver run down his spine. There was something disorienting about being addressed so directly by this girl, something that made his professional detachment feel flimsy, like a paper shield against a storm. He nodded, keeping his expression neutral. Yes, I am here to continue our conversation from yesterday. Can you tell me more about the shadows you mentioned? SCP-029's smile didn't falter, but her eyes seemed to darken, the shadows around her thickening, as if reacting to some unspoken command. The shadows, she murmured, stretching the word out as if savoring it. They are. Restless. They do not like the light here. It's too bright, too harsh. They prefer the dark, the places where secrets can hide. Pierce noted the way the shadows seemed to move, slithering across the floor like ink spilled in water, creeping toward the edges of the barrier. The light in the room was designed to be intense, unyielding, yet here it seemed to falter, dimming at the edges, unable to fully penetrate the darkness that clung to SCP-029 like a second skin. These shadows, Pierce said, forcing himself to maintain eye contact. Do they speak to you? Do they communicate? SCP-029's head tilted to the side, her expression thoughtful. They whisper, she said, her voice dropping to a conspiratorial whisper. They tell me things, show me things. Things that happened long ago, things that will happen. They show me the dark places of the world where men's eyes do not go. They show me truths. Pierce frowned, his mind racing. There was something here, something beyond the anomalous, something that suggested a deeper, more malevolent intelligence. And what do these truths tell you about us, he asked, his voice tight, about me. For a moment, SCP-029 was silent, her eyes boring into his with an intensity that made Pierce's heart quicken. Then, slowly she stood, her movements fluid, almost graceful, like a predator rising from a crouch. The shadows seemed to pulse around her, reacting to her movements, coiling and uncoiling in a silent dance, 
You are curious, she said, her voice almost a purr. You seek knowledge, answers to questions you dare not ask aloud. But the shadows know, Doctor. They see into your mind, into your heart. They know your fears, your desires. They know. Everything. Pierce felt his pulse quicken, a bead of sweat trickling down his temple. He forced himself to stay calm, to remember his training, the protocols, the layers of security that stood between him and the entity before him. Yet, as he looked into her eyes, he couldn't shake the feeling that the barriers were nothing but illusions, paper-thin veils that could be torn aside at any moment. He cleared his throat, breaking the tension. Thank you, SCP-029, he said, his voice sounding thin to his own ears. That will be all for today. SCP-029's smile widened, and for a moment Pierce thought he saw something shift in the shadows behind her something dark and serpentine, a flicker of movement that made his stomach clench. But when he blinked, it was gone, and SCP-029 was once again sitting calmly, her expression serene. Until next time, Doctor, she said, her voice echoing softly in the cold, sterile air. Pierce nodded, turning on his heel and exiting the chamber, the door sealing shut behind him with a hiss. As he walked down the corridor, his mind churned with questions, doubts, a gnawing sense of unease. He'd studied anomalies before, faced things that defied understanding, but this, this was different. The shadows, it seemed, had a life of their own, and they were watching, always watching. And somewhere in the depths of the facility, the lights flickered once more, the darkness deepening, waiting, hungry for the secrets it could uncover. Dr. Aaron Pierce sat in the observation room, his eyes fixed on the screen that showed a live feed of SCP-029 cell. The grainy black and white footage flickered slightly, casting a dim light that did little to dispel the sense of unease that clung to the air. He'd been watching for hours, reviewing the tapes, studying every detail of the girl's movements, every shift in the shadows that surrounded her. The air felt thick with tension, a weight that pressed down on his shoulders making his breath come short and fast. On the screen, SCP-029 moved in her cell, a dark figure amidst the constant glow of the overhead lights. Despite the brightness, the shadows around her were deep, darker than they had any right to be, as if they absorbed the light rather than cast it. Pierce leaned forward, narrowing his eyes. There, just for a moment, he thought he saw a shadow move, slithering along the floor, stretching out toward the corners of the cell. He rubbed his eyes, tiredness gnawing at his vision. Lack of sleep, he told himself. That was all. He'd been working late, reviewing reports, analyzing data. It was natural to start seeing things when your mind was worn thin. But deep down, he knew it wasn't just the fatigue. There was something wrong, something that twisted at the edges of his perception, making him question the reality before him. He reached for his coffee, cold and bitter, taking a sip as he continued to watch. SCP-029 had settled into a corner of her cell, her eyes closed, her breathing slow and steady. But the shadows. They continued to move, flowing like dark water, pooling beneath her like an ink stain spreading on paper. A knock on the door broke his concentration, and Pierce turned to see Dr. Emily Reyes standing in the doorway, her face lined with concern. She was one of the senior researchers, a veteran in dealing with anomalies, and someone Pierce had come to trust during his time at the facility. You've been in here for hours, she said, her voice gentle but firm. You need a break, Aaron. You're looking pale. Pierce waved her off, his eyes returning to the screen. I'm fine. Just observing. There's something happening with 029. The shadows. The shadows again. Emily's tone was skeptical. You know the protocols. The lights are supposed to be strong enough to keep any anomalies in check. The shadows can't harm us. Pierce shook his head, frustration bubbling up inside him. It's not just about the light. It's her. She's changing, becoming more. Something. I don't know how to explain it, but the shadows aren't acting naturally. They're reacting to her, moving with her. 
Emily sighed, stepping into the room. Aaron, you're overworking yourself. This kind of thing can play tricks on your mind. You've read the reports. Anomalies like 029 can affect perception, even sanity. You need to step back, let someone else take over for a while. I can't, Pierce snapped, the words coming out harsher than he intended. I'm close to something. I can feel it. Just give me a little more time. Emily studied him, her eyes softening with sympathy. Just. Promise me you'll be careful, she said. We've lost good people before. I don't want you to be next. Pierce nodded, though he wasn't really listening. His attention was back on the screen, where SCP-029 was stirring, her eyes opening, a faint smile playing on her lips. The shadows shifted around her, dark and alive, reacting to her movements like the coiling of a serpent. He adjusted the audio feed, the static crackling in his ears before her voice came through, soft and clear. They're coming, doctor, she whispered, her gaze fixed on the camera. The shadows, they're coming for you. Pierce's heart skipped a beat, the words sending a chill down his spine. It was a coincidence, he told himself. She couldn't know he was watching, couldn't possibly be speaking directly to him. And yet, as he looked into those dark, knowing eyes, he felt a prick of fear, a cold dread that settled in his gut. The shadows on the screen seemed to grow, lengthening, thickening, creeping up the walls and across the floor. He blinked, his vision blurring, and for a moment he thought he saw faces in the darkness, twisted, hungry faces, mouths open in silent screams. He stumbled back, his chair scraping against the floor, his breathing rapid. The shadows were not just shadows, they were something more, something alive, reaching out to him, trying to pull him into their depths. He looked away, closing his eyes, willing the images to fade, to vanish like a bad dream. When he opened his eyes, the shadows were still there, but the faces were gone. SCP-029 sat quietly, her expression serene, as if nothing had happened. Pierce wiped the sweat from his brow, his hand trembling. He needed answers. He needed to understand what was happening, to see beyond the shadows and find the truth that lay hidden within. But as he stared at the screen, the shadows seemed to pulse, a dark heart beating in time with his own, and he knew that the truth would not come easily. It would come with a price, a price he might not be willing to pay. Somewhere in the back of his mind, a voice whispered, echoing the words he'd heard before. The shadows are always watching. And as he sat in the dim glow of the observation room, he couldn't shake the feeling that they were watching him, waiting, biding their time until the light could no longer hold them at bay. Dr. Aaron Pierce sat alone in his office, the glow of the computer screen casting long shadows on the walls. Reports and surveillance footage cluttered his desk, scattered haphazardly as though a storm had passed through. His eyes were bloodshot, the skin beneath them dark with the shadow of sleepless nights. It had been days since he'd slept properly, days since he'd felt anything resembling peace. The shadows were in his mind now, following him wherever he went. He saw them in the corners of rooms, felt them crawling along the edges of his vision. Every flicker of movement, every shift in the light, made his heart skip a beat. The shadows had become his constant companions, whispering to him in the dark. He rubbed his temples, trying to ease the throbbing headache that had settled behind his eyes. There was a pattern here, he could feel it, like a code waiting to be cracked. SCP-029 was the key, the epicenter of something vast and terrible, and he was the only one who could see it, the only one who could understand. His colleagues had started to notice his behavior, their worried glances following him through the halls. They whispered when they thought he couldn't hear, their voices low and cautious, as if speaking his name too loudly might draw the shadow's attention. Emily had confronted him again, her voice full of concern, but he'd brushed her off. She didn't understand, none of them did. They were afraid, afraid of the dark, afraid of the unknown, afraid of what SCP-029 represented. But Pierce wasn't afraid. 
He was fascinated, consumed by the need to know to understand. Fear was a luxury he could no longer afford. He clicked open another video file, the footage jumping to life on the screen. SCP-029 cell appeared, as familiar to him now as his own reflection. The girl sat in her usual spot, her eyes closed, her face serene. But the shadows around her were alive, writhing and shifting like living things, responding to her every breath, her every heartbeat. Pierce leaned closer, his eyes narrowing. He could see patterns in the movement, shapes forming and dissolving in the darkness. It was like watching the surface of a dark ocean, the waves rippling with unseen currents. There was a language here, a code written in shadow, and he was on the verge of understanding it. He pulled up the audio feed, listening to the soft crackle of static, the faint rustle of movement. And then, beneath it all, he heard her voice, so quiet it was barely more than a whisper. Doctor. Pierce. He froze, his heart pounding. It wasn't possible. The audio feed was supposed to be one way, a tool for monitoring, not communication. And yet, there it was, her voice clear and unmistakable, calling out to him. Doctor, can you hear me? He swallowed, his throat dry. Yes, he said, his voice rough with disuse. I can hear you. The shadows seemed to pulse, as if acknowledging his response. Good, she said, her voice like silk sliding over steel. I've been waiting for you. Pierce shivered, a cold sweat breaking out on his forehead. What do you want? he asked, his voice trembling. What are you? SCP-029 smiled, a slow, knowing smile that sent a jolt of fear through his gut. I am the darkness, Doctor, she said softly. I am the shadows that hide in the corners, the night that waits beyond the light. I am everything you fear, everything you desire. He shook his head trying to clear the fog of exhaustion from his mind. No, he muttered, more to himself than to her. You're just a girl, just a girl. Her laughter was like the whisper of leaves in the wind, soft and mocking. You know better than that, Doctor. You've seen the truth. The shadows have shown you. You are mine now, as I am yours. Pierce's hands clenched into fists, his nails digging into his palms. He had to stay calm, had to keep control. He couldn't let her get inside his head, couldn't let the shadows win. But the shadows were already there, creeping in through the cracks, filling his mind with dark thoughts, dark desires. He could feel them, like a black tide rising, threatening to drown him. They whispered to him, voices soft and insistent, promising secrets, promising power. He closed his eyes, trying to shut them out, but they were everywhere pressing in on him, smothering him. He could see their shapes now, twisted and shifting, faces forming and melting in the darkness. They were beautiful, in a terrible, inhuman way, like the patterns in a kaleidoscope, ever-changing, ever-hungry. Let go, Doctor, SCP-029 whispered, her voice a siren's call. Let the shadows take you. Let them show you the truth. He wanted to, God help him, he wanted to. The darkness was so inviting, so comforting. It would be so easy to let go, to let the shadows consume him, to find peace in their embrace. But he couldn't. He had to resist. He had to fight. For Emily, for his colleagues, for the world beyond these walls. He had to find a way to stop her, to stop the shadows before they swallowed everything. He opened his eyes, the shadows retreating at the force of his will. No, he said, his voice steady now, resolute. I will not let you win. SCP-029's smile faded, her eyes narrowing. You cannot resist forever, Doctor, she said, her voice cold. The shadows will always be there, waiting. And when you are ready, they will take you. The screen went dark, the shadows fading into nothingness. Pierce sat back, his hands shaking, his breath coming in ragged gasps. He was alone again, the room silent except for the hum of the computer. He knew now that he was in over his head, 
that he was playing with forces he couldn't begin to understand. But he couldn't stop. The shadows had him in their grip, and they wouldn't let go. He looked down at his hands, seeing the faint traces of shadow on his skin like bruises from an unseen hand. He was marked now, claimed by the darkness, and no matter how hard he fought, he knew that one day the shadows would come for him. And when they did, there would be no escape. But until then, he would keep fighting. He would find a way to stop them, to save himself, to save them all. He had to. Because if he didn't, the shadows would consume everything, and the world would be lost to the darkness forever. Dr. Aaron Pierce felt the weight of the facility pressing down on him as he walked through the narrow corridors, his footsteps echoing off the metal walls. His heart beat, a rapid rhythm in his chest, each thud a reminder of how close he was to something he couldn't quite name. He'd been in the depths of the facility for days, lost in the maze of his own thoughts, searching for answers that danced just out of reach. The air felt different today, charged with an energy that made the hair on his arms stand on end. There was an undercurrent of tension, a sense that something was about to happen. As he approached the door to containment unit Theta-7, the feeling grew stronger, a pulsing vibration that seemed to resonate through the very walls. The door slid open with a hiss, and Pierce stepped inside, his eyes immediately drawn to the figure seated in the center of the cell. SCP-029 sat cross-legged on the floor, her eyes closed, her face serene. The shadows around her were darker than he'd ever seen them, thick and writhing, coiling like a nest of snakes. They seemed to move with a life of their own, reacting to some invisible force, their edges sharp and hungry. Dr. Pierce came a voice from his left, and he turned to see Lieutenant Thompson, one of the security guards assigned to the unit. The man's face was drawn, his eyes shadowed with fatigue. Is everything all right? You've been spending a lot of time down here. Pierce nodded absently, his attention still on SCP-029. I'm fine, he said, his voice distant. Just observing. I think she's on the verge of something, something important. Thompson frowned, glancing at the girl in the cell. She's dangerous, doctor. You know the protocols. If she starts acting up, we have to contain her. No exceptions. Pierce waved him off, irritation prickling at the edges of his mind. I know the protocols, Lieutenant, but we need to understand her. We need to. A sudden movement caught his eye, and he turned back to the cell. SCP-029 was standing now, her eyes open, staring directly at him. The shadows around her surged, black waves crashing against the walls, rising like a dark tide. Pierce's breath caught in his throat, a chill washing over him. SCP-029, he said, his voice trembling. What are you doing? She didn't answer, her gaze steady, unblinking. The shadows moved with her, stretching out, reaching toward the glass barrier that separated them. For a moment, Pierce thought he saw faces in the darkness, twisted, distorted faces with mouths open and silent screams. Dr. Thompson's voice was tight with fear, we need to leave. Now. Pierce ignored him, stepping closer to the glass. What do you want, he asked, his voice barely more than a whisper. What are you trying to show me? SCP-029 smiled, and the shadows exploded. The lights flickered, the room plunging into darkness. Pierce heard Thompson curse, heard the sound of a weapon being drawn, but his eyes were on the cell, on the swirling mass of shadows that filled the space. They moved like liquid, flowing around SCP-029, wrapping her in a cocoon of darkness. Containment breach, Thompson's voice was a shout, echoing in the dark. Seal thee. His words were cut off by a strangled cry, and Pierce turned just in time to see the shadows reach through the glass, slashing out like tendrils. They wrapped around Thompson, pulling him into the darkness, his screams muffled by the sound of the shadows whispering, hissing. Pierce stumbled back, his heart pounding, his mind racing. The glass, it should have held, 
The protocols, the safeguards, none of it was working. The shadows were pouring out now, spreading across the floor, crawling up the walls, devouring the light. He turned, his hand fumbling for the door controls, but the shadows were faster. They surged forward, black waves crashing around him, pulling him down. He could feel them, cold and slick, wrapping around his legs, his arms, his throat. SCP-029, he gasped, his voice choked with fear. Stop this. Through the darkness, he saw her, standing at the center of the storm, her eyes glowing with a dark light. She looked at him, her gaze calm, almost tender. You wanted to understand, Doctor, she said, her voice soft, echoing through the shadows. Now you will. The shadows are mine, and I am theirs. We are one. And now, so are you. The shadows closed in, and Pierce felt the world slip away, felt the darkness wrap around him, pulling him under. He fought, clawing at the air, but it was like trying to swim through tar. The shadows were everywhere, inside him, around him, filling his lungs, his mind, his soul. He could hear them, whispering in his ears, a thousand voices speaking in unison, a dark chorus that filled his thoughts. They spoke of secrets, of things hidden in the dark, of truths too terrible to see. They showed him visions, flashes of a world consumed by shadows, a world where light was a distant memory, where darkness reigned supreme. He saw faces, Emily's, Thompson's, his own, twisted by fear, by pain, by the shadows that consumed them. He saw the facility, swallowed by darkness, the walls crumbling, the lights flickering out one by one. And through it all, he heard SCP-029's voice, soft and relentless, a constant presence in the dark. We are the shadows, she whispered. We are everywhere, and soon the world will be ours. Pierce's vision blurred, the shadows closing in, his thoughts slipping away. He reached out, trying to hold on, trying to fight, but the darkness was too strong. It pulled him under, dragged him down into the abyss. And as the last light faded, as the shadows swallowed him whole, Pierce knew that he was lost. The shadows had won, and there was no escape. He was theirs, now and forever. Dr. Aaron Pierce sat alone in his office, the fluorescent light overhead buzzing softly, a single, unending note of tension that matched the feeling gnawing at his gut. The walls seemed to press in on him, the air stale, thick with the scent of coffee and sweat. He stared at the door, his thoughts a tangled mess of fear and determination. Every shadow in the room felt like a threat, every flicker of movement a warning that the darkness was closer than he realized. He hadn't spoken to anyone since the incident in SCP-029's containment cell. The security cameras had recorded the whole thing, the shadows, Thompson's death, Pierce's own terrified flight. They'd pulled him out of the dark, his skin cold and clammy his eyes wide with horror. He'd tried to explain, tried to tell them what he'd seen, but his words had fallen on deaf ears. The other researchers, the guards, they all looked at him with a mixture of pity and skepticism, their eyes full of doubt. Except for one. Dr. Emily Reyes stood in the doorway, her arms crossed over her chest, her face lined with worry. She was one of the few people who hadn't turned away, who hadn't treated him like a madman. She'd seen things too, things that didn't make sense, things that defied logic and reason. She knew the darkness was real, that the shadows weren't just figments of Pierce's imagination. Pierce, she said, her voice soft but firm. We need to talk. He looked up, his eyes red-rimmed, his hands trembling. Emily, he said, his voice hoarse. I don't know what's happening. The shadows. They're alive. They killed Thompson. They almost got me. SCP-029, she's controlling them. She's... I know, Emily interrupted, stepping into the room. I've seen the footage. I've read the reports. This is worse than we thought, Aaron. Much worse. Pierce swallowed, his throat dry. What do you mean? Emily closed the door behind her, her expression grim. There have been other incidents, she said, 
other anomalies similar to SCP-029, all showing increased activity. The shadows are spreading, infecting other parts of the facility. We've lost contact with two containment units already. The higher-ups are talking about a full lockdown, maybe even a purge. A purge, Pierce's voice cracked. They can't do that. There are people in those units, scientists, guards. They can't just. They will if they think it's the only way to contain the threat, Emily said sharply. You know how they operate. Containment first, casualties second. We're running out of time. Pierce's mind raced, the words echoing in his head. Containment, purge. The shadows were growing stronger, spreading like a virus. If they weren't stopped, they would consume everything, everyone. He thought of SCP-029, her dark eyes, her knowing smile. She was the key, the source of the shadows. But how could they stop her? How could they fight something that was more darkness than flesh? Emily, he said slowly, his voice shaking. We have to find a way to contain SCP-029. She's the one controlling the shadows. If we can isolate her, maybe we can stop this. Emily's eyes softened, a flicker of hope in her gaze. Do you have a plan? Pierce ran a hand through his hair, his mind racing. We need to use her own power against her. If the shadows are drawn to her, then maybe they can be trapped with her. We can modify the containment cell, use it to create a shadow cage, something that will hold her, hold them. But we'll need help. We'll need help. We'll need... The lights flickered, a brief pulse of darkness that sent Pierce's heart racing. Emily's eyes widened, her hand reaching for the door. We don't have much time, she said urgently. The shadows are already here. We have to move now. Pierce nodded, his heart pounding. He grabbed his tablet, shoving it into his bag. Let's go, he said, his voice tight. We need to get to the control room, access the containment systems. If we can reroute the power, isolate the cell. The door burst open, and a figure stumbled into the room, eyes wild with fear. It was Dr. Harold Green, another researcher, his face pale, his clothes torn. They're here, he gasped, his voice choked with terror. The shadows, they're everywhere. They're coming for us. We have to. A dark tendril snaked out from the corridor behind him, wrapping around his neck. Green's eyes bulged, his hands clawing at the air, his screams muffled by the shadows that pulled him back into the dark. Harold Pierce shouted, lunging forward, but Emily grabbed his arm, pulling him back. It's too late, she said, her voice trembling. We have to go, now. They ran, the corridors echoing with the sound of their footsteps, the shadows chasing them, whispering, hissing. Pierce's mind raced, his thoughts a blur of fear and determination. They had to reach the control room, had to find a way to stop this before it was too late. As they rounded a corner, Pierce caught a glimpse of something moving in the darkness, a shape, a figure, eyes glowing with a cold, dark light. SCP-029. She stood in the shadows, her smile wide, her eyes fixed on Pierce. We are coming. Doctor, she whispered, her voice a cold wind that chilled him to the bone. You cannot stop us. The shadows are everywhere. And soon you will be too. Pierce stumbled, his breath coming in ragged gasps. Emily pulled him forward, her grip strong, her face set with determination. Don't listen to her, she said fiercely. We can do this. We can stop her. We just have to. The lights flickered again, plunging them into darkness. Pierce felt the shadows closing in, felt their cold fingers brushing against his skin. He fought against the fear, against the voice in his head telling him to give up, to let go. But he couldn't. He had to keep going, had to find a way to stop the darkness, to save them all. Because if he didn't, the shadows would consume everything. And the world would be lost to the darkness forever. Dr. Aaron Pierce sat alone in the darkened control room, the monitors casting a pale glow over his gaunt features. The facility was silent, save for the low hum of machinery 
and the occasional creak of the building settling. It was the kind of silence that pressed in on you, thick and suffocating, filling the spaces between thoughts with a relentless pressure. He hadn't slept in days. Every time he closed his eyes, the shadows were there, lurking just behind his eyelids, waiting to drag him into their depths. Emily was gone. He didn't know where she was, if she'd made it out, or if the shadows had claimed her like so many others. The thought of her being swallowed by the darkness twisted his insides, but he couldn't bring himself to leave the control room to find out. He couldn't risk it. The shadows were everywhere now, creeping through the facility, turning light into dark, hope into despair. He'd sealed the doors, rerouted the power, done everything he could think of to keep them out. But it was a losing battle. The shadows were inside him, inside the walls, inside the very air he breathed. No matter how many lights he turned on, how many barriers he erected, they were always there, just out of sight, just waiting for him to let his guard down. He tried to contact the outside world, to warn them, but the communication systems were down. Every time he picked up the phone, all he heard was static, the whispers of the shadows seeping through the line, filling his ears with their dark promises. The facility was isolated, cut off, a tomb of steel and concrete where the shadows reigned supreme. Pierce stared at the monitors, his eyes dry and burning. The feed from SCP-029 cell was nothing but static now, the camera overwhelmed by the darkness. Other parts of the facility showed similar scenes, rooms once filled with light and life now smothered by the encroaching shadows. And in the few places where the light still held, there was only emptiness, the hollow echoes of a place abandoned by everything except the dark. His hands shook as he reached for his coffee, the cup cold and half full. He drank it anyway, grimacing at the bitter taste, but grateful for the jolt it gave him. He couldn't afford to sleep, couldn't afford to let his guard down. Not when the shadows were so close, so eager to claim him. He glanced at the clock on the wall, though he no longer had any sense of time. Hours, days, they all blurred together in the dark. He was losing track of everything, his thoughts tangled, his mind fraying at the edges. The isolation was getting to him, the solitude gnawing at his sanity like rats in the walls. The shadows whispered to him constantly now, their voices a constant, insistent drone in the back of his mind. They promised him release, promised him peace, if only he would let go, if only he would surrender to the dark. But he couldn't. He wouldn't. He had to hold on, had to find a way to stop this, to fight back. But the longer he sat there, alone in the dark, the harder it became to remember why he was fighting, what he was fighting for. The shadows were everywhere. They were inside him, filling the spaces between his thoughts, turning his mind into a labyrinth of darkness. He saw them in the corners of his vision, creeping along the edges of the monitors, slipping through the cracks in the walls. They whispered to him, calling him by name, taunting him with visions of what lay beyond the dark. He rubbed his eyes, trying to clear the fog that had settled over his thoughts. He had to focus, had to keep his mind sharp, but it was so hard, so exhausting, and the shadows were so close, so inviting. Aaron, a voice whispered, soft and familiar. He jerked upright, his heart pounding, his eyes darting to the door. But there was no one there, just the empty room, the quiet hum of the monitors. Aaron, the voice came again, and this time he recognized it. Emily, her voice so clear, so close, as if she were standing right next to him. But that was impossible. She was gone, lost to the shadows. He'd seen it happen, had watched as the darkness swallowed her whole. Emily, he whispered, his voice trembling. Is that you? There was no answer, just the soft hiss of static from the monitors. He clenched his fists, his nails digging into his palms. This was a trick, a ploy by the shadows to break him, to make him let his guard down. He couldn't afford to fall for it. He couldn't afford to believe it. 
But the voice came again, more insistent this time, more desperate. Aaron, please. I'm here. I need you. Help me. He stood, his legs shaky, his mind racing. Could it be real? Could she have survived, somehow? Could she be out there alone in the dark, calling for him? The shadows whispered in his ear, urging him forward, urging him to go to her, to find her, to save her. But he hesitated, fear rooting him to the spot. What if it was a trap? What if the shadows were leading him to his doom, to the same fate that had claimed so many others? But what if it wasn't? What if she was really out there, waiting for him, depending on him? His thoughts spiraled, the isolation pressing in on him, the darkness closing around him like a vice. He had to make a choice, had to decide whether to stay or go, whether to cling to the safety of the control room or venture out into the shadows, into the unknown. Aaron, the voice came again, softer now, fading. Please. He couldn't take it anymore. The fear, the doubt, the loneliness, it was all too much. He grabbed his flashlight, the beam cutting through the darkness like a knife, and stepped toward the door. He had to try. He had to find her, had to save her. He couldn't live with himself if he didn't. He opened the door, the darkness beyond it swallowing the light from the control room. The shadows were thick, oppressive, pressing against him as he stepped into the corridor. The walls seemed to close in, the air cold and thick with the scent of decay. Emily, he called out, his voice echoing in the dark. Emily, where are you? There was no answer, just the soft rustle of movement, the whispers of the shadows closing in around him. He pressed on, the beam of his flashlight flickering, the shadows growing darker, deeper, more solid. He could feel them now, brushing against his skin, cold and slick, like the touch of something long dead. Aaron, the voice came again, so close now, just ahead. He quickened his pace, his heart pounding, his breath coming in ragged gasps. He had to reach her, had to save her, had to. He rounded a corner and there she was. Emily standing in the dark, her face pale, her eyes wide with fear. She reached out to him, her hand trembling, her voice a broken whisper. Aaron, she said, help me. He rushed to her, his heart breaking at the sight of her, so fragile, so lost. He reached out, took her hand, felt the coldness of her skin, the tremor in her grip. But something was wrong. The shadows were all around her, swirling, writhing, alive. They clung to her, pulled at her whispered in her ear, and as he looked into her eyes he saw it, the darkness, deep within, pulling her down, consuming her from the inside out. No, he whispered, his voice shaking. No, this isn't real. You're not real. But she just looked at him, her eyes full of sorrow, full of fear. Aaron, she whispered, her voice fading. I'm sorry. The shadow surged, and she was gone pulled into the darkness, leaving him alone, the cold air rushing in to fill the space where she had been. He screamed, a sound full of anguish, of loss, of despair. The shadows closed in, their whispers turning to laughter, cruel and mocking, as they wrapped around him, pulling him down into the dark. And in that moment he knew he was lost. The shadows had won, the isolation had broken him, torn him apart, piece by piece, until there was nothing left but darkness. He sank to the floor, the flashlight slipping from his grip, the beam flickering out. The darkness was complete now, total, all-consuming. He could feel the shadows inside him, filling him, turning him into one of them. And as the last light died, as the darkness claimed him, he heard the shadows whisper one last time. Welcome home, Aaron. The walls of the facility felt like they were closing in, each metal panel a silent sentinel witnessing the unraveling of its inhabitants. The hallways stretched into infinity, their usual stark whiteness dimmed by the emergency lighting that flickered uncertainly, casting long, quivering shadows 
Aaron Pierce's footsteps echoed in the empty corridor, each step a stark reminder of how hollow the place had become. His breaths were shallow, every inhalation feeling like it drew in more than just air. Something darker. Something alive. He held the ancient tome close to his chest, its leather cover worn and cracked, the pages yellowed with age. The book was a relic, something he had found in the archives, buried beneath layers of reports and forgotten data. It was a book of rituals, of incantations and symbols, of knowledge that had been buried for a reason. Knowledge that spoke to the darkness, that whispered to the shadows. Knowledge that promised understanding, that promised control. The control room was just ahead, the door slightly ajar, the dim light spilling out like a beacon. He stepped inside, the room eerily silent, the monitors dark. The book in his hand seemed to pulse with a life of its own, as if aware of the purpose for which it had been summoned. He set it down on the table, his fingers tracing the symbols on the cover, his mind racing with the possibilities. This was madness. He knew that. But it was a madness born of desperation, of a need to understand, to find a way to fight back. The shadows were winning, creeping into every corner of the facility, turning the place into a dark, suffocating maze. They were in his mind, whispering to him, showing him visions of things that were. Things that would be. He had seen Emily in those visions, her eyes dark and hollow, her skin pale and cold. He had seen the facility, empty and silent, the shadows crawling through the halls like black serpents. The rituals were his only hope. The only way to fight the darkness, to turn its own power against it. The pages of the book were filled with symbols, with words that twisted and writhed on the page, as if alive. They spoke of ancient gods, of dark forces that lurked beyond the veil of reality, of rituals that could summon them, bind them, control them. He flipped through the pages, his eyes scanning the symbols, his mind struggling to make sense of the alien language. He could feel the darkness pressing in around him, the shadows whispering, urging him on, promising him power, promising him answers. His fingers trembled as he traced the symbols, his mind a whirl of fear and determination. The room seemed to grow colder, the air thick with a sense of anticipation. He took a deep breath, steeling himself, and began to speak the words, his voice low, the syllables strange and foreign on his tongue. The symbols on the page glowed faintly, a dark light that seemed to pulse in time with his words. The shadows in the room shifted, moving closer, as if drawn by the sound of his voice. He could feel them brushing against his skin, cold and slick, like the touch of something not quite real. His heart pounded in his chest, his breaths coming in ragged gasps, but he kept speaking, the words pouring out of him, a dark chant that filled the room, that filled his mind. The air seemed to hum with energy, a low, vibrating sound that set his teeth on edge. The symbols on the page flared, bright and blinding, and for a moment he couldn't see, couldn't think, couldn't breathe. The shadows surged around him, a dark tide that pulled at him, that wrapped around him, that threatened to drown him. He stumbled back, the book slipping from his fingers, falling to the floor with a heavy thud. The light faded, the room plunging into darkness, the shadows closing in. He could hear them now, not just whispers, but voices. A cacophony of sound that filled his ears, filled his mind. We are here, they whispered. Their voices a dark, twisted melody. We are here, and we see you, Aaron Pierce. We see you and we know you. He fell to his knees, his hands clutching his head, trying to block out the voices, the sounds. But they were inside him, inside his mind, a part of him. The darkness was alive, and it was in him, through him, around him. He opened his eyes and the room was gone. He was standing in a vast, dark space, the ground beneath his feet cold and hard. Shadows stretched out in every direction, a sea of blackness that seemed to go on forever. In the distance he could see shapes, dark figures moving through the shadows, their forms shifting and changing, never quite solid, 
He took a step forward, the ground beneath him seeming to ripple, like the surface of a dark pool. The air was cold, a biting chill that cut through him, that made his breath come out in white puffs. He could hear the whispers, louder now, a constant, droning sound that filled the air, that filled his mind. He walked on, his steps slow, his movements hesitant. The figures in the distance grew clearer, their shapes becoming more defined. They were people, or things that had once been people. Their eyes were dark, empty, their faces twisted in expressions of fear and pain. They moved slowly, their movements jerky, as if they were being pulled by invisible strings. One of the figures turned, its eyes locking onto him. It opened its mouth, a soundless scream tearing from its lips, its face contorted in a rictus of agony. He stumbled back, his heart pounding, his breath coming in short, sharp gasps. The figure reached out, its hand a dark, skeletal thing, its fingers long and clawed. He turned and ran, the darkness closing in around him, the shadows chasing him, their whispers turning to shouts, to screams. He could feel them at his back, could feel their cold breath on his neck, their claws reaching for him their voices filling his mind. He tripped, fell, his hands scraping against the hard ground, the pain sharp and real. He rolled onto his back, his eyes wide, his breath coming in ragged gasps. The shadows loomed over him, a dark wave that threatened to engulf him, to swallow him whole. And then, through the darkness, he saw her. SCP-029, standing tall, her eyes glowing with a dark, cold light. She smiled, a slow, knowing smile, her teeth white and sharp in the darkness. You wanted to understand, she said, her voice cutting through the chaos clear and cold. You wanted to see, and now you will. The shadows are mine, Aaron Pierce, and now they are yours. The darkness surged, a wave of blackness that crashed over him, that filled his vision, his mind, his soul. He screamed, a sound of pure terror, of pure despair, as the shadows pulled him down, pulled him under, into the dark, into the void. And as he fell, he knew. He was lost. The ritual had failed. The darkness had won. The shadows were everywhere. And there was no escape. The facility was a war zone. Red emergency lights flashed down the corridors, casting everything in a hellish glow. Alarms blared a constant, piercing wail that echoed off the walls. The sound of gunfire and shouted orders filled the air, punctuated by the screams of the dying. It was chaos, pure and simple. And at the heart of it all was the darkness, spreading like an infection, turning the light into shadow, hope into despair. Aaron Pierce stumbled through the corridors, his body bruised and battered, his mind reeling from the visions he'd seen. The shadows were inside him, coiled around his thoughts like a living thing, a parasite that fed on his fear. He could feel them pulsing beneath his skin, whispering in his ear, showing him things that couldn't be real, things that couldn't be happening. But they were. The facility was falling apart, the containment protocols failing one by one. The shadows were everywhere, crawling through the air ducts, slipping through the cracks in the walls, turning every room into a dark, suffocating tomb. He'd seen guards swallowed whole, their screams cut short as the darkness engulfed them. He'd seen scientists, his colleagues, people he knew, running, their faces twisted in terror, only to be caught and consumed. He reached a junction, the corridor splitting into three different paths. The map of the facility was burned into his mind, but it was hard to think, hard to think, hard to remember where he was, where he needed to go. He pressed a hand to his temple, trying to clear his thoughts, trying to push back the darkness that clouded his vision. A sound echoed down the corridor, the soft patter of footsteps, the whisper of something moving in the dark. He turned, his heart hammering in his chest, his eyes straining to see. The red lights flickered, the shadows deepening, and for a moment he thought he saw something, a shape, a figure, standing at the end of the hall. SCP-029, he whispered, his voice trembling. He knew it was her. 
He could feel her presence, like a cold hand pressing against his skin, like the touch of something not quite real. The shadows around her shifted, moved, as if alive, coiling around her like snakes, like chains. She took a step forward, her movements fluid, graceful, her eyes glowing with that dark, cold light. The shadows are free, Aaron, she said, her voice cutting through the noise, calm and clear. The light cannot hold them. The light cannot hold me. He took a step back, his mind racing, the fear clawing at his throat. Why are you doing this? He demanded, his voice hoarse. What do you want? She smiled, a slow, chilling smile that made his skin crawl. I want what I have always wanted, she said. Freedom. To be what I am without chains, without cages. The shadows are my allies, my servants. They are my gift, my power. And now they are yours. He shook his head, his hands trembling. No, he said his voice cracking. No, I don't want this. I don't want any of this. But you do, she said softly, taking another step forward. You called to the shadows. You spoke their names, summoned them with your rituals. You opened the door, Aaron. You set them free. He stumbled back, his back hitting the wall, his heart pounding. The shadows seemed to pulse, the air growing colder, heavier. He could see them now, swirling around her, reaching out to him, dark tendrils that moved with a life of their own. You can't stop this, she said, her voice a whisper, a promise. The shadows are everywhere. They are in the walls, in the air, in the very ground beneath your feet. You cannot fight them. You cannot fight me. He closed his eyes, his mind spinning, his thoughts a tangled mess of fear and confusion. She was right. The shadows were everywhere. He could feel them, pressing against him, suffocating him. He couldn't breathe, couldn't think, couldn't. A hand grabbed his arm, pulling him back, away from the darkness. He opened his eyes, blinking against the red light, and saw Emily standing there, her face pale, her eyes wide with fear. Aaron, we have to go, she said, her voice urgent. Now. He nodded, his legs shaky, his body numb. She pulled him down the corridor, away from SCP-029, away from the shadows. He could hear them behind him, the soft rustle of movement, the whispers growing louder, more insistent. He stumbled, nearly falling, but Emily held him up, her grip strong, her pace steady. We can't stop her, he gasped, his breath coming in ragged gulps. She's too strong. The shadows, they're everywhere. Where? Shut up, Emily snapped, her voice hard. Just keep moving. We're not dead yet. They rounded a corner, the corridor opening up into a large, open space. It was the central atrium, the heart of the facility, where the control center was located. The place was a mess, the floor littered with debris, the walls cracked and crumbling. The emergency lights flickered, casting long shadows that seemed to move, to breathe. Guards were everywhere, their weapons drawn, their faces set in grim determination. They were forming a line, blocking the entrance to the control center, their eyes fixed on the dark corridor from which Pierce and Emily had just emerged. Pierce could see the fear in their eyes, the way their hands trembled, the way they held their guns like lifelines. Hold the line. One of the guards shouted, his voice strained. Don't let them through. The shadows surged, a dark wave that poured into the atrium, filling the space with a thick, cloying darkness. The guards opened fire, the sound of gunfire echoing off the walls, but it was useless. The bullets vanished into the shadows, swallowed whole, leaving nothing but silence. Pierce felt Emily's hand tighten on his arm, her grip like a vise. Aaron, she said, her voice low, urgent. We need to get to the control center. If we can access the mainframe, we can initiate a lockdown, seal off the lower levels, contain the breach. He nodded, his mind barely able to process her words. The shadows were pressing in, filling the atrium, turning the light into dark. He could hear the guards shouting, could see them falling. One by one, their screams cut short as the darkness consumed them. 
They ran, their footsteps echoing in the vast, empty space, the shadows at their heels. The control center was just ahead, the door open, the room beyond bathed in red light. They stumbled inside, the door sliding shut behind them, the locks engaging with a heavy thud. Pierce collapsed against the wall, his breath coming in ragged gasps, his body trembling. Emily rushed to the console, her fingers flying over the keys, her face set in grim determination. Come on, come on, she muttered, her voice tight. We don't have much time. The shadows were at the door, pressing against the glass, their dark forms swirling, writhing. Pierce could feel them, could hear them, their whispers filling his mind, drowning out everything else. You can't stop us, they whispered, their voices a dark chorus. You can't hide. We are everywhere. We are everything. You belong to us. Emily's fingers hesitated, her eyes widening. Aaron, she said, her voice trembling. The system's compromised. The shadows, they're in the mainframe. I can't. The lights flickered, the monitors going dark. The room was plunged into darkness, the only light coming from the red emergency lights that cast long, quivering shadows on the walls. Pierce stared at the door, his heart pounding, his mind blank. The shadows were everywhere. They were in the walls, in the air, in the very circuits of the facility. They were unstoppable, invincible. They had lost. And as the darkness closed in, as the shadows filled the room, Pierce heard SCP-029's voice, soft and triumphant, echoing in his mind. The shadows are free, Aaron. And so am I. The darkness surged a wave of blackness that swallowed the light, swallowed the world, swallowed everything. And there was nothing left but shadow. The world was darkness. The facility had fallen silent, the once constant hum of machinery replaced by the soft, insistent whispers of the shadows. The air was thick, suffused with a sense of finality, of endings. The red emergency lights flickered, casting faint, dying glows that only served to deepen the dark. It was as if the facility itself was holding its breath, waiting for the inevitable. Aaron Pierce moved through the corridor, each step a struggle against the suffocating darkness. His flashlight had died hours ago, the batteries drained, leaving him to navigate by the dim, erratic glow of the failing lights. The shadows pressed against him, cold and slick brushing against his skin like the touch of something alive. He could feel them inside his head, a constant, throbbing presence that filled his thoughts with darkness. He was alone. He'd lost Emily in the control room, the last barrier between them and the shadows breached. She'd stayed behind, fighting to regain control of the system, to initiate a lockdown, to do something, anything, to stop the darkness. But he knew it was futile. The shadows were everywhere, in the walls, in the air, in the very circuits of the facility. There was no escape, no refuge. He stumbled, his foot catching on something soft, something that gave way beneath his weight. He looked down, his breath catching in his throat. A body lay at his feet, the uniform familiar, the face twisted in an expression of terror. One of the guards, one of the many who had tried to hold the line, to fight back against the darkness. His eyes were open, staring sightlessly at the ceiling, his skin pale, his body cold. Pierce stepped back, his stomach churning, his heart pounding. He had seen too many bodies, too many faces twisted in fear, in pain. The facility was a graveyard now, a tomb for those who had dared to stand against the shadows. And he was just another dead man walking, waiting for the darkness to claim him. He turned, his eyes scanning the corridor, the shadows shifting, moving. He could feel her presence, could sense her watching him, waiting. SCP-029, the daughter of shadows, the one who had started it all, who had opened the door, who had set the darkness free. She was here, somewhere in the depths of the facility, the heart of the storm, the center of the dark. He had to find her. He had to end this. He had to something. The thoughts were muddled, unclear, 
lost in the fog of his mind. But he knew, somehow, that she was the key. The shadows were hers, her power, her gift. If he could reach her, maybe, just maybe, he could stop this. He could. A sound echoed through the corridor, a soft, lilting laugh, a sound that sent chills down his spine. He turned, his eyes wide, his breath catching in his throat. She was there, standing at the end of the hall, her dark hair cascading over her shoulders, her eyes glowing with that cold, dark light. SCP-029, he whispered, his voice trembling. Daughter of Shadows, why? She smiled, a slow, chilling smile that made his skin crawl. You already know the answer, Aaron, she said softly, her voice a whisper that seemed to fill the air. I am what I am. The shadows are mine and I am theirs. We are one, and now so are you. He took a step back, his hands trembling, his mind racing. This doesn't have to end like this, he said, his voice shaking. We can. Can what she interrupted, her voice hard, cold, turn back time? Undo what has been done. The shadows cannot be unmade, Aaron. They are a part of you now, a part of this place part of everything. You opened the door, you let them in, and now you must face the consequences. He shook his head, his breath coming in ragged gasps. I didn't mean for this to happen, he said, his voice breaking. I just wanted to understand, too. To see, she finished, her eyes gleaming. To know. You are like me, Aaron. You seek the darkness, the secrets that hide in the shadows. You called to them, and they answered. They showed you the truth, and now you cannot escape it. The shadows around her shifted dark tendrils that reached out, that curled around her like living things. She raised a hand and the darkness moved, a wave of blackness that flowed toward him, that filled the corridor, that swallowed the light. He stumbled back, his heart pounding, his mind blank. The darkness was everywhere, pressing against him, filling his lungs, his mind, he could hear the whispers, louder now, a cacophony of voices that filled his ears that drowned out everything else. Come, she said, her voice a command, a promise. Join me, Aaron. Step into the shadows. Become one with the dark. He felt his will slipping, felt the darkness pulling at him, felt the cold, soothing touch of the shadows wrapping around him. It would be so easy to let go, to give in to become a part of the dark. The fear, the pain, the guilt, it would all fade away, swallowed by the shadows, lost in the void. He took a step forward, his body moving of its own accord, drawn to her, drawn to her, drawn to the darkness. He could see her eyes, those dark, knowing eyes, see the shadows swirling around her, alive, pulsing. He could feel the cold biting into his skin, into his soul. Yes, she whispered, her voice soft, triumphant. Come to me, Aaron. Become what you were meant to be. Embrace the darkness. His foot crossed the threshold, the shadows closing in, a wave of blackness that surged around him, through him. He could feel it, like ice, like fire, burning, freezing, a sensation that was both pain and pleasure. The whispers were louder now a symphony of sound that filled his mind, that filled his soul. And then he was falling, tumbling into the darkness, the light fading, the world slipping away. He could see her, standing above him, her eyes glowing, her smile wide, her arms outstretched. The shadows wrapped around him, pulling him down, pulling him into the void, into the dark. And as he fell, as the last light faded, he knew. This was his fate his destiny. He was the darkness, and the darkness was him. There was no escape, no turning back. He was lost forever. And the shadows closed in, the world fading to black, and there was nothing left but darkness.